Hey everybody, Dave Basulto, FilmmakingCentral.com. I'm here today to show you Adobe's new Premiere Pro CS6. And I'm actually working on a uh, Premiere Pro CS6 boot camp. And I will put up a URL for you later on uh, for you to take a look and sign up if you're interested in it. Uh, it's all video lessons and uh, it's going to be really uh, fantastic, I think. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at this new version of Premiere Pro, my favorite editing system. Uh, so once you open it up, it looks pretty much like the old Premiere Pro. Um, you got your source monitor here, your program monitor here, but I'm only messing with you because it doesn't look like this at all. Let me go to Window, Workspace, Reset Current Workspace. I'm in the Editing Workspace. Beautiful. So Adobe's new UI is tremendous. It's completely customizable as, as before, but even more so now with new features such as your controls down here, you can customize. Let me get to that in a second. But you can see we have this beautiful source monitor here next to the program monitor. And down below here, as we're used to, we can double click in our project window and find clips, blah, blah, blah. But they added these icon views, what they call the thumbnails. What's so good about these? Well, I can scrub and see what the footage is. And it's just tremendous. And as you can see right here, it's showing me that uh, I have actually uh, audio and video and that I'm using these uh, clips in uh, different sequences. It's telling me right there. So not only do I know that I've got these clips there, and let me just import one more clip just to kind of show you. So this is the new clip. So the new clip shows you right here, it's got audio and video. Well, you see the video and here's the audio. This little mark here, I'm not gonna drag my mouse over, but next to that is, it's right here when I move my mouse away. That shows me that it's actually in a sequence and, and will let me go to that sequence. So a really cool feature. I love this visual ability now to kind of scrub through footage and go, yeah, yeah, this is what I want, la, 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 la. So kudos on this new UI. Now back to the controls, um, I can customize these by the, whenever you see these plus buttons, I can just click on that and go, okay, uh, here's our buttons. Well, I want to add uh, maybe, let's see, I've got the camera. I actually need the margin safe quite a lot, so I'll just drag that down here, click OK. And there's my margin safe now. I can go back here and click, uh, oops, excuse me. Yeah, go back here and see reset. And so I can have that back. I can also delete them all and have no UI there, uh, no, no controls. So that those people that just use uh, your shortcuts, you're good to go and it gives you more real estate for your screen. So that's really cool. Um, and then let's look at some of the awesome features that I love. So not only the UI, but let's take a look at Warp Stabilizer. Yes, in uh, Adobe After Effects CS 5.5, the Warp Stabilizer came in and blew us all away. We all wanted to have it. Uh, we're all shooting footage um, out on, on the go, and a lot of times it can come in shaky. Uh, and so what do we do? Well, now uh, this Warp Stabilizer tool is native in Premiere Pro CS6. So let's take a look. Some footage of my son out golfing. If I press the button here, this is the footage without Warp Stabilizer. This is footage from my iPad, by the way. And they're nice and smooth. Pretty killer, right? Let's look at it again. A little shaky. And nice and smooth. And I can even tweak it more. This is just a quickie uh, to put this tutorial together. So that's a huge bonus warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro uh, CS6. Worth its weight in gold and upgrading in my opinion. Uh, Multicam support, big upgrade on that. Uh, I do a lot of multicam uh, at the high school that I teach media at. Uh, we do a lot of football games, sporting, like all sporting events uh, where we do multi-cameras. We also do uh, plays, etc. And we're looking for ways to add more camera angles. Now we can. Um, so right now I've got seven layers on there and I can actually do as many cameras as I want. So, but let's take a look. Seven. Before it was four, I've got seven in here. 
So I'm gonna go into my multi-cam sync. So what I did here was select all these and create a nested comp with my multi-cam. And I'll actually go into how to do multi-cam editing in another lesson in my video training I'm doing, my Premiere Pro Boot Camp. So now I've got this, I'm gonna right click on my footage, I'm gonna do multi-camera enable, I'm there. Now I wanna see the multi-cam monitor. I'm gonna to go to Window, Multi-Camera Monitor, and there it is. Let's just make it a little bigger. And I'll just go back here because some of the clips were short. But you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, different cameras in there. And I can have as many as I want. It'll just keep making rows of three. So this is a big upgrade for me. It's, it's fantastic. I love it. So kudos for the multi-cam support. Uh, let's take a look at the audio mixer. It's redesigned. So you can do play around with this. That's a new feature as well. And I will go more into the audio mixer later. It's just as good, if not better. And of course, um, if you're semi-pro or pro, you're going to go into Adobe Audition. But this is really something nice to uh, work with. Uh, fast application of effects is something I think is really cool. And um, so go into my effects window here. And we'll pick uh, just the warp stabilizer for now. And if I just click on this first piece of footage and try and find an effect, uh, I'm sorry, uh, let's just say a, a blur for now. So now I've got this selected. If I just double click and go into my effects controls, you'll see now I have a Gaussian blur there. Let's do that one more time. I'll delete that. I'll choose a fast blur and just double click and there it is. No more clicking and dragging and going, oh no, I dropped it in the middle, uh, what should I do? It's just a click, it's just a click, double click, and it'll add it to whatever piece of footage you have. And just to show you, let's see, we've got blur. There's our blur, whoa, okay. So that's a new feature that's really cool. And uh, next is the rolling shutter repair. I don't have any footage for that right now. I didn't have my 7D with me today. So, uh, but if you've got uh, 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 any kind of CMOS type camera and you go into rolling shutter, You'll see it's got rolling shutter repair, and that's going to take care of uh, wobbles, uh, skewing, and smearing. So it's really going to do a lot of great work. I'm going to go off into that in detail once again, as I said. Uh, let me go back into this. Another cool feature that I am so happy that they added, and I wish they had done it back when I was doing some of my independent films that I edited on Premiere. But it's an adjustment layer. Yes, the adjustment layer like you see in After Effects in Photoshop is finally in Premiere Pro CS5, uh, 6. It's tremendous. It's going to be highly useful uh, for situations whenever you want to um, uh, you know, add one effect or color correction to an entire layer instead of having to go into each one or copy and pasting, blah, blah, blah. So here I have one on. It's very simple to add. You just go down here. You go new item, adjustment layer. Okay, and it'll add the adjustment layer there. And essentially what it's going to do, and actually let's just add one here. So let's go um, adjustment layer. And we'll just do that. And then you just click and drag this on top. And then you can scale it to wherever you want. Or maybe you don't want that last clip. You just want those clips. So it does all that for you. Everything that's underneath this adjustment layer will be affected by whatever you put on the adjustment layer. So let's get that rid of that one. So I have one here that if I just click on it, you'll see I added the new three-way color corrector that's new uh, in Premiere Pro CS6. They've updated the look and, and the UI of it, and it's just a lot more responsive. It's really simple to get your uh, color balance with this, so I love it. Um, I'm going to turn it back on. So all I did was just make this... Um, uh, black and white, uh, get rid of the hue and saturation. Uh, maybe that's what somebody wants and we're good to go there. I could always turn it off up here if I have a lot of effects, etc. So now I'm done with all that. Let's take a look at what I do after. So I've got my adjustment layer, my, I'm sorry, my adjustment sequence selected and I'm going to press Command M on the Mac. It's going to take me to the export settings area. And once again, I have uh, all the wonderful formats that are out there. Uh, I'm choosing H.264. 
And once I've got that, my God, they just added so many things from 3GPP, all the Android phones and tablets, that's new. Um, Apple iPad, two uh, 4S uh, phones, regular iPad. Um, let's see, of course, HD and TSC, TiVo, Vimeo. I mean, they've got every preset you could possibly want. Uh, so that was pretty impressive. Uh, let's say I'm going to go out to my uh, iPad 2, and I want it to be, uh, uh, keep it in 1080. So that's great. And then clicking here, I'll see the output. And now I can open up the exporter, uh, the um, Adobe Media Encoder, sorry. I always want to have maximum render quality. So now I can queue it, and it opens up the Adobe Media Encoder CS6. And this is a whole new layout as well. And we can make watch photo folders and have them auto encode. And so if I want to drop something in there, and let's say I need five different things, I need a, a Android, an iPad, an iPhone, a QuickTime, and a Blu-ray DVD. I can throw that into my watch folder and it'll encode all of those uh, for me as you know one click. So that's fantastic. I will go into incredible detail about all this later on in my training, my boot camp, get you guys all up to speed and uh, be, make you become professional users of Premiere Pro. So this is the Adobe Media Encoder and it's really fast and tremendous. And that's it. Uh, I'm going to, like I said, go into detail. Um, the other thing is the native support for in Premiere is for pretty much every camera you can think of, mixing and matching, like I said. Uh, I got uh, footage from my iPad 3 in here, or the new iPad, and that's the footage I have. Uh, it does Arri Alexa Cam, the new Canon EOS uh, C300, uh, of course, the Red Scarlet X, and the Epic. So, um, not to mention everything else under the sun. Um, so, it's fantastic. It's a great multi cam source uh, editor. I love using it for that. Uh, now I can stabilize footage. Uh, it is my go-to uh, editing system. So if you're interested in checking out some of my uh, future tutorials that I'm going to make, uh, my boot camp, uh, just click on the link below. It's going to take you to a website where you can sign up, and uh, we'll let you know in the, when we're ready to launch that. But it'll be right around the time that uh, this is um, Premiere Pro is ready for the public. So thank you guys and looking forward to uh, working with all of you and giving you more tutorials. But Premiere Pro CS6 is fantastic. And check out the Adobe Premiere Pro uh, production suite for CS6. Uh, it's a great buy and a great upgrade. And I believe if you own uh, uh, CS5 or 5.5, there's some program out there. So keep an, keep an eye on that as well. Okay, thanks all. I'm Dave Basulto. I'll see you all at NAB.